Okay, hello. It's, uh, we're at 1.30 now, so I figure we can get started. <clears throat> Just uh, if you want to let me know in the chat if you can hear me, that would be lovely. Perfect. Okay, well, uh, good afternoon and welcome to the fifth webinar in the Technology Services webinar series. Uh, my name is Andrew Nierenhausen, uh, and I'm joined today by my colleague Laura Peters from Library Development Services, who will be uh, in the chat. This webinar is being recorded, so if you want to watch it again or share it with your staff, uh, you're able to do that. Uh, a link will be sent out uh, after the webinar has ended, uh, and you'll also get a very brief survey uh, after the webinar, and it would be very helpful for us if you were able to answer just a few questions about how we did today. Uh, also, feel free to ask questions that uh, pop up as we go along, but I probably won't see them while I'm presenting, um, so we'll answer those questions uh, as we get to the end of the webinar. So today, we are continuing on the topic of the TrackPack app, uh, which we, we touched a little bit on last time. Um, last time was a bit more of a, a broad overview of the app, uh, but today we're going to talk specifically about two of the circulation functions of the app, uh, and that being click and collect uh, and self-service. So self-service uh, or self-checkout uh, is a function that allows users to check out items from your library using only their phones or mobile devices. This works similarly to a self-check machine but without actually needing the expensive machine for your library. And the click and collect function, um, also called curbside pickup, um, allows users to let you know that they are on the way to the library, uh, which are their holds they're ready to pick up. Uh, so you can have them checked out and ready to deliver when the patron arrives. So both of these functions are really easy to set up uh, and get started with. So today we're gonna show you how to do that. So let's take a look at our emulator. <laughs> so we'll start with uh, self-service. Uh, from, from the home page of the app, um, we can see the self-service icon here. It's on the second page for me. Uh, if your library hasn't already opted in to use self-service, the icon won't actually show up for you yet. Um, so if you're logged in on your mobile device, uh, you might see this, you might not, uh, and if you see it, it's actually, um, you will be able to use it right away, it's active. Uh, but if you don't see it, uh, and if you're interested in using this feature, uh, you just need to reach out to YRL for us to activate it. We just need to make some changes in Polaris, uh, and then this will be active for um, your users in the app. <laughs> Uh, and one interesting uh, point to note about this, uh, the self-service function is, it's tied to the physical location of your library. Uh, so that means uh, if you had a library book at home, you would not be able to check it out with your phone. So to use the self-service function, uh, the mobile device needs to access your GPS location, uh, and it'll, it'll ask you for that. Um, your library's GPS coordinates have already been entered into the app. So the app is gonna double check the location of the device against the location of your library to make sure that they're the same. And when they are the same, um, then users will be able to uh, check out materials. So because I'm showing you the app through uh, an emulator on a laptop, I'm not able to access um, GPS information. So uh, this is the message that you're gonna see um, if you don't have access to GPS or if you're outside of the library. So I, uh, I took some screenshots in advance so I could show you what it actually looks like um, when you do get into the, the self-service function. And we'll take a look at those here. So this is the first thing you're going to see. You're going to be prompted to uh, enable your, your GPS function. And when you do that, um, you will be able to select the checkout function. 
and then you're going to get a barcode scanner uh, and you'll just scan your uh, item barcode with this and it'll tell you if it's been checked in or sorry checked out uh, to your account and of course I picked a picture where uh, I've got this big spooky wasp <laughs> Uh, and yeah, so once you're in the library and you actually have the app enabled, it's, it's just that easy, um, scanning the barcodes. Uh, so for most of the items that you're checking out, you're going to get a, a green check mark that lets you know the checkout was successful. Uh, and this is going to automatically generate a self-service receipt that is saved in the app. Uh, you may occasionally run into items that do not check out, and these are going to give you a red X when you try to do that. Generally, this happens with reference materials or other um, non-circulating items that still have a barcode. If a patron tries to check those out, um, but you're not able to check them out for whatever reason, uh, it's going to let you know that in the app. Uh, and when this happens, patrons will just need to bring the item up to the circulation desk, and then staff should be able to see why the item didn't check out. Um, patrons also might find that they're not able to check out items if their card is blocked due to fines or if they have some sort of uh, blocking note on their account. So uh, if you uh, actually use the self-service function, you will have some self-service receipts and you can see those here under the uh, account section. And we can see a history of all the, the self-service transactions that you've completed at the library. So this isn't a super detailed um, record. It just shows uh, the item barcodes, whether the checkout was a success or a failure, uh, the due date of the item, uh, and which library the checkout occurred at. So your, your detailed checkout history is still going to show up under your account. So for example, those two items that I tested, um, they are currently checked out to me. And if you have the detailed checkout history enabled on your TrackPack uh, account, you can click Checkout History and see that. Um, this account does not, so there's nothing there. <clears throat> so there, there's one concern that I should address for, uh, for the self-checkout, and this is for libraries that use RFID as a security measure. Um, so if you, you have a RFID um, security system that has an alarm gate uh, where the alarm sounds when materials leave the building, um, this uh, self-service function might not work for you or, um, you know, you might have some questions about it. So the, the app can check out the materials to the account, but it cannot deactivate the RFID chip. Um, right, this is done with uh, usually with magnets. Um, so there's not a great way of deacti deactivating the alarm from the mobile device. So patrons will still need to visit the, uh, the circulation desk to deactivate those RFID chips. So if you do use those security gates um, and you are interested in using um, self-service, uh, you can reach out to us, um, wsfl at yrl.ab.ca, and we can, we can talk about some options, but um, that may present a bit of an issue. Uh, another question that comes along with this feature is how comfortable are your patrons with checking out items and then walking out of the library without speaking to a staff member? Some of your patrons might find it very convenient. Uh, I know I think it's a, a, a great feature and I love to use it, um, especially if the circulation desk is really busy. Uh, maybe there's a bit of a wait time. You can just check out your items and go. Uh, but some patrons might feel uncomfortable with the process. Um, I can see why it would feel weird to pick a book up uh, off the shelf and just walk out of the library. So they might still want to have somebody uh, checking out their, their items, uh, and this is fine. Um, the mobile self-check isn't going to replace circulation personnel. It's just providing one more option for you and your patrons. Uh, and yeah, so that is essentially it for the, the self-service function. Um, for all practical purposes, it's as easy as uh, selecting the icon in the app here and uh, checking out materials. So the other function that I want to talk about today is uh, click and collect. So 
this service was initially rolled out as a response to COVID-19. Um, it provided us with a way to circulate items to patrons with minimal interaction, but it's still really useful for patrons who are in a hurry, um, maybe patrons with disabilities who have difficulty with mobility, getting in and out of the library, uh, patrons with young children who don't want to bundle, you know, everyone out of the car and then back into the car again. So there's lots of reasons why you might consider um, using this service to support your patrons. And it, this is a feature that helps uh, automate curbside pickup. You might still be doing curbside pickup, so this um, kind of helps streamline the function. Um, similar to the self-check function, uh, the first step is um, to get this set up is going to be contacting YRL. We need to know a few things, like what hours you want to provide this service for, uh, and what kind of questions you want the app to ask your patrons. Uh, and we'll get a, a bit more in-depth on those, those questions as we go along. But uh, if this is something you're interested in and you want to reach out, uh, contact us at wsfl at yrl.ab.ca, and we can get the process started. Um, so here we have the staff client. So where self-service takes place uh, entirely on the app, Click and Collect uses both the app and a staff client. Uh, this staff client is incredibly easy to use and is very intuitive, uh, as we'll, we'll see as we go through. During the hours that you are providing the service, uh, you will have the staff client open on a computer. Uh, and when a patron requests uh, Click and Collect service, you'll hear a ding. Uh, the, the browser will actually beep for you, uh, and a request will uh, show up here in the client. The patron will provide you with some information based on your questions, uh, like their estimated arrival time, what kind of vehicle they're driving, or their license plate. You can track how long the request has been active, uh, which gives you a sense of how long it will be until the patron arrives. And then you can automatically check out all of the patron's holds without, um, without having to run everything through uh, Polaris. Uh, and then when the patron arrives, they'll let you know uh, using the app from their end, and you can walk the materials out to their vehicle. So let's actually walk through the process uh, and see what this all looks like. So the first thing you'll need to do is open up the, the staff client in your browser. Um, you can just bookmark this page once we get it set up for you. Each, each library is going to have a different um, staff client address. Uh, and then you just need to keep this page open during your available hours. You also need to press this, uh, this red button up here, um, which is going to enable the service. I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, if the browser is closed or if the, the button is still red, you're going to um, get a message when you try and use the service. So I'm actually uh, going to try and use the service here now that it's uh, currently disabled. So you go through your holds. You see we have two active holds here, two holds that are available, and we have this click and collect icon. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to let us know click and collect is not currently available, um, currently no staff members available, uh, an option to refresh, uh, and then um, this is the yellowhead uh, phone number that's entered in here, so that'll be different for your library. Uh, all of this text is customizable, so if you want uh, a different message to display during your closed hours, we can do that as well. Uh, and actually, pretty much all the text that you're going to see in the um, click and collect is customizable, and I'll, I'll reiterate that as we, we look at some different stuff. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to activate uh, the staff client now, and then we'll give that another try. So you can see now it's green, uh, click and collect has been enabled. And we'll go through the patron side. Just kind of back out of here to make sure everything's refreshed. Uh, and actually, just before I jump in here, um, it's important to note um, patrons can't just place a hold and then um, you know show up to the library for click and collect. Um, the hold needs to be active, right? So they place a hold. Um, and then you pull it from the shelf and check it in, which generates a hold notice. 
uh, and then that will let the patron know that their hold is available. And it's at that point that they can um, go into the app and place the click and collect because you want to verify that, you know, you actually have the item there and that the hold is available. Okay, so we're going to go into our holds and we're going to go into click and collect. And this time it's going to go through. <clears throat> Uh, and so we're going to be asked some questions here. Uh, and this is just auto-filled because I've uh, tested this before, so my information is uh, is already in here. I've got two items that are uh, being held for pickups. Um, and so I've filled out my, my, my questions as a, a patron. So this is the vehicle that I'm going to be showing up in. Again, these questions are totally customizable. Um, you can put whatever you want in here. Uh, there, these are just a way for you um, to identify the patron when they are coming to pick up their items. So after these are filled out, they can say, I'm on my way. Uh, and then the patron can give you an estimated time of arrival. So I, I'm not sure if uh, that, that noise um, came through on the webinar, but uh, the staff client uh, just made a sound as I was uh, said I'm on my way, so we'll take a look at that in just a second. Um, because I'm using the emulator, I can't really use the, the live GPS, uh, but we can give a manual uh, estimated time of arrival. Uh, and then when the patron actually shows up at the library, they can click I'm here. But uh, for now, let's go back into the staff client. So when I, uh, when I hit that button, said I'm on my way, this popped up. Uh, and I'm going to click on the request here. Uh, you can click in this white space, and it'll open up the request and um, show you the items that uh, the patron has requested. So this um, 30 minutes here is the ETA that the, the patron selected, and this is going to tick down in real time uh, and kind of give us an idea of how long the request has been active. The patron can change this. Uh, at any time. So if you know I'm the patron and I say, oh, you know what, I think I'll actually be there in about 15 minutes. Um, that's going to update to 15 minutes here. But this is going to, you'll see this tick down as we uh, we work through the queue here today. <clears throat> so these are the items that are uh, available for pickup for the patron. Um, and you can select or deselect these um, if for whatever reason um, they're not available to go out to the patron yet. You you can uh, you can make that choice, but once we we verify that the items are uh, available and we have them in hand, we can say items pulled, and we'll click that, and that's going to move us into the ready queue. So same thing here. We can we can click on the request, and here we get the option to check out the items or reshelve the items. So maybe the patron uh, changes their mind. They don't want to come in for a pickup anymore. Uh, maybe they never show up. Uh, we can we can hit those um, hit the reshelve option there, and that will just uh, kind of end the whole process. <clears throat> or we can select checkout, and I'm going to do that right now. And you can see that. Uh, checkout was a success for both of these items. We got the, the green check mark here. And so these items are now checked out to the patron. Um, I don't need to do anything with the books. Um, they're already on the patron account. Uh, similar to the self, uh, self-service, self-checkout function, you can get a failure notice with the, the red X. Uh, and again, this usually occurs if the the patron's been blocked or if the item is non-circulating for some reason. For some reason, uh, If this happens, then the patron will have to come into the library um, to manually uh, check out the item or, or whatever it is, uh, maybe take a look at their account. Um, but uh, when they use the, the click and collect service, we can contact them uh, and let them know through the messenger. Uh, and you'll see that in just a moment here. Uh, one thing to note in this process is that the staff client won't show you notes on patron accounts. So if the patron does have a note, um, you can still, you know, check out items directly to the patron without seeing the notes. So um, 
some libraries that I've talked to, they still take the patron uh, account and take a quick look just to make sure that there are um, no notes that are um, no warning notes or anything like that on the on the patron account. So the request is going to stay in this position until the the patron arrives. You can see that it's uh, it's been about two minutes since we started here, and the estimated time of arrival is ticking down. But uh, we can get our patron now to say that they've arrived. So they're going to say, I'm here. And that's going to give us another uh, audio cue there. And they're going to get sent this uh, automated message, which, once again, um, this is totally customizable. Uh, if there's some other um, notice that you want to give the patron when they arrive, um, you can do that as well. <clears throat> So now we have this uh, messenger window um, between staff and the patron. And so this request has moved over into the arrived queue. And if we click on the request here, it's going to open up again. We can see that um, these checkouts have been a success. Uh, and if, if we hadn't checked out the items in the ready uh, queue and the patron had arrived, we would still have the option to uh, check them out uh, here in the arrived queue. So we also have those responses to the questions that the patron entered in the app. Um, so now we can uh, we can see what kind of vehicle the patron's in, what their license plate is, and we can we can run those materials out to the patron. And then we have our messenger here. So uh, this was automatically sent out to the patron. Uh, maybe they want to let us know that they're actually here. Say, uh, I'm here. And that's going to show up on our staff client, and we can say, on the way. <clears throat> and so, yeah, we have the, the option to do uh, instant messaging. And again, if there was uh, any issues, if the, the checkout failed for some reason, you could say, hey, can you just pop into the library, um, check out on this item failed, and, uh, you know, you can let them know why. And at this point, um, you should have handed the, the patron their items, and then the transaction is over. Um, so either the staff uh, or the patron have the option to end the transaction. So we have this uh, big green done button, and uh, the patrons have one as well. So we're just going to click that, and that's going to end the transaction. And if we go over to the staff side, you can actually see the transaction has just been removed from the screen here. Uh, at this point, we have uh, we have this little menu up here, and this is where we can see um, history of transactions. So if we click uh, completed transactions. Uh, and this is uh, just for today. You can actually see that uh, we have two transactions here. Uh, I ran a test one earlier in the day. And you can uh, you can use this for your statistics. Uh, you can um, set the dates to whatever you want and see um, how often it's been used. So you can uh, get statistics that way. You also have an option here for max Q. Uh, so we, we have the YRL one set to 100. Um, but the libraries that I've helped um, set this up for, they a lot of them set this up for uh, maybe a queue of four or five. Um, but from what I've heard, they they almost never get um, you know more than two requests at a time. So it's it's not a huge concern, but it is an option that you can play with. Uh, and yeah, so most users are still going to want to come into the library to pick up their holds, um, you know browse the library and do the things that they normally do. So it's it's unlikely that you're going to be overwhelmed by uh, requests uh, coming through click and collect. But again, it's another, uh, another option and another way um, to provide a service to your users. And so this is click and collect. So if this is something that you might be interested in, uh, something you want to try out, um, reach out to us, uh, WSFL at YRL ab.ca and uh, we can get started with that right away so with that being said uh, do we have any questions about uh, click and collect uh, self-service um, 
anything at all while you have me here. Okay, it looks like nothing in the chat right now. I'll, uh, I'll give you a minute just in case there's any questions that come up. And uh, I guess while I'm waiting to see if any any questions show up, uh, I'll let you know that um, our next technology services webinar is going to be on June 16th, um, where Laura and I are going to uh, walk you through some of the basics of image editing. Uh, and we're going to look at a few different tools that you have access to, like Library Aware, uh, Canva, and even uh, MS Paint. So. Uh, if you're interested in that, there will be something in the, the newsletter where you can register. Uh, yeah, about a month until we do that, so uh, keep a lookout for that. Perfect. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, yeah, excited to uh, to get started with that with you. So we'll uh, we will wait for your for your contact. Okay, well, if there's uh, no other questions coming in here, um, thanks again, and have a wonderful afternoon. And we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next webinar.